is a way of interpreting data. It's interpreting a relationship between two events. Well, two sets of data, that is. For example, we can have a, the X and Y, right? We'll just put one over here. And scatter plots are in the quadrant one of the coordinate plane, Cartesian grid. We have data in X and Y, X and Y. Bring that down a little. And X could be, for example, I'll just get rid of the X and we'll put in, erase that better. If I put in the, um, the sales, let's say we put in the sales of ice cream, and over here is the temperature, we can see there's a relationship between temperature and sales. So what do you think this would look like if we're going from January here and into July? We should see stuff like this. We should see sales like this, right? We shouldn't see sales going the other way. Well, it's possible, but we shouldn't. We're just predicting, we're assuming that ice cream sales and temperature has a relationship. The hotter it is, we should see more people buying ice cream. So there's a correlation there, and that we'll talk about that word, and also called association. There's an association here. By the way, if the sales are going up left to right on the Cardassian grid, this is a positive correlation. We'll talk more about that. So as you can see, there are points on this grid, and they're scattered. And the closer they are together, it's a stronger correlation, which we'll talk about. We'll talk more about that. So before we talk about that, let's talk about some terms. The first term is univariate. So univariate is the key word here, un, un means one. There's one variable involved. So let's say that you just wanted to know the weights. You were just wanting to know the weights of your puppies. Let's say you worked at a Petco or you worked at some pet store and you wanted to weigh the puppies. So there's just one thing you're doing. You're just weighing the puppies. You're not comparing them. You're not, there's no correlation. You're just weighing the puppies. Now the previous one we talked about ice cream sales. Now the ice cream sales depends on the temperature. So we're comparing the ice cream and the temperature. That's two. So when you're only doing one, like the weights of puppies, it's univariate. So what do you think two would be? Well, two is bivariate. So bivariate data is when we're using two sets of data. We're using the X, meaning let's say the, the, te the, the, the sales, how much you were selling, and the temperature, ice cream sales, for example. That's bivariate. Okay? So the other two terms let's deal with now. Association and correlation. It's actually association or correlation. They're the same thing. So let's look at that. Give an example here. If with our scatter plot is going up, we see a positive correlation. From left to right, it seems like it's going up. If we see left to right that it seems to be going down, that's negative. Positive, negative. And if you see no correlation, it's just everywhere, right? You don't see if it's going up or going down. So we have a positive correlation, plus sign, negative correlation, and no correlation. And again, the closer these points are together, the stronger the correlation is. All right. Let's erase this. So here is our grid. And we have some points. And as you can see, they're pretty close to each other. They're going up. What type of correlation is this? What type of an association is this? It's a positive association. It's a positive association, or you can say a positive correlation. And they're very close to each other, so we can say this is a strong positive correlation. Now this one would be even stronger.
right? Even stronger positive correlation. Now here we are seeing it going up, but they're more scattered, right? So this is not as strong as the one I showed you before, but it looks like it is going up. So again, it still is positive. And there's another term. I'm going to put it here. It's called the line of best fit. It's just a line, a straight line, a linear line we can put through that will cut through the data points where it's cut right in the middle. So you have to eyeball it. So you could just say, well, if we make something like this, maybe it looks like that the data is equal on both sides. So if it's equal on both sides, you get a line of best fit. And with a line of best fit, you can see more clearly that it's positive. Okay, so that's line of best fit. So again, we said we had a positive correlation. And here we have a negative correlation. Now what if you have this negative correlation, and then you have something over here? Well, this right here is not fitting in the data. This out here would be an outlier. That's an outlier. And there seems to be a few of them. If you have more, then they're clustered. So remember I talked about that word clustered? There seems to be something happening here that's when they're grouped together, when they're tightly grouped together, it's a cluster. Right? Let's just write their word cluster. And an outlier is just something that's far away from the data point. So when people are looking at this data, like a statistician, and they see outliers, well, that's a warning sign. What's happening there? Why is that there? So let's do an example again. So here is bivariate data, right? Because we have two. We're talking about ages and height. So you would assume that the height should increase as the ages increase, right? So let's look at, they looked at two-year-olds and they got, let's say they got this information here. Four-year-olds increased, right? So it, it should be slowly increasing in height, right? And you're getting different points, right? Now, if you saw this, that's an outlier. What is that? That four-year-old, one four-year-old, or it could be a couple of four-year-olds, were almost as high as someone who was 11 years old. Possibility, right? So if someone was looking at this, they go, ooh, what is this? Right? That's an outlier. And, of course, this is a positive correlation. You can see it the other way, too. If you can see you know, over there, you would say, well, what's happening there? Why are those people so small? And it could happen, right? So those are what outliers are. This can also be weight, ages and weight. What do you think would be one with ages, but it's negative? It's a negative correlation. What would be here if we have ages, but we have a negative correlation? Can you think of one? Think of one. Okay, so let's say we had something here. We had ages. Ages going up. And yet something's happening where it's going down. And then we have a few outliers over there. What can this be for it to be negative? Well, there's many, many things it could be. Maybe this is... Let's put a few more here. So this could be like uh, watching, let's say, TV during the day during a school day, right? Why would it go down as the ages increase? Because people over here are in school, right? They're in school at this time, so they shouldn't be watching TV um, during the day, during a school day, right? Unless they're sick, right? So, but for the most part, you know, a, a one-year-old is probably home, and they're watching TV or the TV's on, right? But as the ages increase, watching TV at, during a school day should decrease. What's another one we can put for ages? 
and that's negative. What do you think? Well, it could be um, sleep time. Right? Your sleep time could go down as you get older. And then it could actually bounce back up. You know, you can see later on, you know, as the, a one-year-old will sleep all day, a baby's going to sleep a lot. And as you get older, you'll sleep less. And then it'll, it'll just, it'll it's not going to go completely down, right? It's impossible. It's, everyone has to sleep. So you could get something like this, where the it's just evening out. And as you get into teenage land, it gets goes down more, and then it might go back up. Stuff like that. It depends on the age range. So with scatter plots, you'll get a input output box, which you should know is a domain or range box by now. And you'll have the X and the Y, and you have a bunch of data that you'll just put on a plot. And then you'll make your scatter plot, just like we did with linear equations. Now, unlike linear equations and functions, the x could have different y's, right? So you can have, like, a, this one-year-old could have whatever they were doing, right? And another one-year-old could have that. Another one-year-old could have that. You know, depending on how much data you get, you'll just plot it, right? And you you might have more X's involved, right? This could be 10, you know, and then here's another 5-year-old. We don't know what this is, but you'll have a domain and range box. With scatter plots, though, again, you can have, the X can have more than one Y with scatter plots. With functions, though, that can't happen. Remember in functions that one X for one Y. So you'll take your input-output box, your domain and range box, and you'll just plot the points on a scatter plot. So that's what scatter plots are. That's the beginning of scatter plots and association. And we'll deal with more scatter plots in the next video. Great job.